بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on and this is our last درس in the series in the study of the باب or chapter al amr bi muhafidha bi muhafidha ala salawat al maktubat the command to the chapter of the command of the obligation of prayer to preserve and protect our obligatory duty of the salat the five daily prayers and in the last lecture we talked about the hadith of Mu'adh and a little bit about the ahadith that come after that the ahadith which illustrate for us the importance of adhering to the prayer and that the sahaba radiallahu regarded it as disbelief in accordance with the nasus from the Prophet وسلم, regarded it as disbelief to leave the prayer. And the first hadith that Imam al Nawawi rahmatullahi mentioned on Jabirin, on Jabirin radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, Sami'tu Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul. In the Baina Rajali Wabaina Shirki Wal Kufri Turka Salat Ruahu Muslim. This is in Sahih Muslim. So in the hadith of Jabr, Radiallahu Tala Anhu, he reported the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Between a man and disbelief and paganism or kufr or shirk is the abandonment of the prayer. This is what the Prophet ﷺ said. And in the next hadith, and this the Prophet ﷺ said, and this is the hadith of Buraida radiallahu ta'ala anhu. An Buraida radiallahu ta'ala anhu an al-Nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal al-ahdu al-ladhi baynana wa baynahum as-salat فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرَ رُوَاهُ تِرْمِذِي وَقَالَ حَدِيثٌ حَسْنٌ صَحِيحٌ So the hadith of Buraida as well, Buraida رضي الله تعالى عنه reported, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said that whichever, that which differentiates us from the disbelievers and hypocrites is our performance of the prayer. He who abandons it becomes a disbeliever. And Imam Tirmidhi classified this hadith as hadith Hassan Sahih. And then the hadith which follows, the hadith of Shaqiq, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, وعن شقيق بن عبد الله التابعي المتفق على جلالته رحمه الله قال كان أصحاب محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يرون شيء من الأعمال تركه كفر غير الصلاة رواه ترمذي في كتاب الإيمان بإسناد صحيح تصوص حديث إن ترمذي and this is the hadith of, Shik, uh, of Shaqiq ibn Abdullah, who was a tabi'i, meaning he was a student of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'in. And it is agreed upon, upon that uh, his status, his greatness, his status was, is agreed upon. And he said, rahmatullah he said, that the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not consider the abandonment of any action as disbelief, as disbelief except neglecting the prayer. And this is in Tirmidhi. 
all of these ahadith and athar of the salaf of this ummah illustrate for us the important principle of adhering to the prayer. That this is a sign of belief. This is a sign of iman. This is what distinguishes us between other communities. It's the prayer. It's the Islamic prayer. That which was legislated by Allah on the limbs and tongue of Muhammad وسلم, in accordance with his sunnah and from these ahadith we find or we benefit in that it gives us a stern warning or it is a stern warning for the one who is who leaves the prayer and the one who is wasteful regarding their salat or careless regarding their salat and that leaving it is from one of the actions of disbelief and in this regard some of the ulama they say that leaving the prayer even during due to laziness that the one who does this is a disbeliever the major disbelief which takes one out of the fold of Islam. Another benefit we gain from this hadith, these ahadith is the difference between the Muslim and other than him is the command to establish the salat, the prayer. And that this is a sign which distinguishes between Ahl Iman or Ahl Kufr, between Ahl, the people of Iman and the people of disbelief. Another benefit from this hadith is that this hadith shows us that the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to see that the one who left the prayer, that this was, uh, leaving the prayer was one of the deeds of disbelief. And in the final hadith in this bab, that Imam Noah we mentioned, and this will be our last hadith and our last regarding the study in this series. It's the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said, Wa an Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In al awla ma yuhasibu bihi al abd yom al qiyama min amalihi salatu. فَإِنْ صَلَحَتْ فَقَدْ أَفْلَحَا وَأَنْجَهَا وَأَنْجَهَا وَإِنْ فَسَدَتْ فَقَدْ خَابَا وَخَسِرَا فَإِنْ انْتَقِسَ مِنْ فَرِيدَتِهِ شَيْئًا قَالَ رَبُّ عَزَّ وَجَلْ أَنْذِرُوا حَلِّ عَبْدِي مِنْ تَطَوْعِي لِتَطَوْعٍ فَيُكْمَلُوا مِنْهَا مَا انْتَقِسَ مِنَ الْفَرِيدَةِ ثم يكون سائر أعماله على هذا رواه ترمذي وقال حديث حسن حديث uh, إمام ترمذي graded this hadith as حسن in this hadith of the messenger of Allah the hadith of uh, Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه he reported the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said the first of uh, a man's deeds for which he will be called to account on the day of resurrection will be Salat. If it is found to be perfect, he will be safe and successful. But if it is incomplete, he will be unfortunate and a loser. If any shortcoming is found in the obligatory Salat, the glorious and exalted Allah will command to see whether his slave has offered any voluntary salat, voluntary salat, so that the obligatory salat may be made up by it. Then the rest of his actions will be treated in the same manner. Ahabati Fillah, we learn immense benefit from this at the ulama, derived from this hadith and the other ahadith. And from this, from those benefits, 
is that a salat min awla a'mala lati yuhasibu alayha la'abd yawm al-qiyamah. That the prayer is one of the first deeds that a person has reckoning or will be accounted for on the day of judgment, held to account by uh, on the day of judgment. The second, and and something I want to 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 mention in that regard, he said, "Awal amal," that this is one of the first deeds. So letting us know, talking about our deeds and distinguishing between our deeds and our creed and our belief. So obviously, someone being accounted for regarding their salat, because perhaps they might have, uh, may, uh, maybe Allah favored them with having very beautiful prayer, beautified prayer, following the conditions for prayer, following the, uh, having the pillars for prayer in place, and having the obligatory actions of prayer in place, as well as the voluntary actions, the sunnah. But however, that individual's creed might be a creed of deviance and misguidance. So then, of course, that outweighs their beautiful a'mal, meaning that if someone is to the state of kufr in their belief, shirk, worshiping the graves, whatever, even if their prayer was beautiful and their prayer fit all the prerequisite conditions, that would nullify their prayer the fact that they died upon the major shirk. So the point being to distinguish between deeds and and the uh, asal of iman, which is the the heart. The second benefit of habitafillah is that the prayer which is performed beautifully meaning that all the conditions and, and, and performed per, perform perfectly, is one of the reasons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes ease for the servant on the day of judgment. So by perfecting your prayer, this can cause you additional ease on the day of judgment because the one who has khalal or who has mistakes and carelessness within with regards to his or her prayer that they'll have additional accounting and it will be looked at their nawafil in order to fill the gaps and the shortcomings of their obligatory prayer. They'll be looked with more scrutiny, so to speak. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the importance of the nawafil and that the, that the importance of the nawafil, one of the importance, uh, one of the important aspects of nawafil, of, of extra prayer, is that it fills the void of your regular prayer and the shortcomings with regards to your regular prayer. So do as much nawafil as, as, as possible. Uh, do your sunnahs. Make sure you have the sunnah of fajr and never leave it. Make sure you have the sunnah of dhuhr, four before and two after. Make sure you have the, uh, the pray the sunnah of maghrib, the rakatain after maghrib. And pray the uh, also if you're going to the masjid and pray the the rakatain for entering the masjid and as much as is possible and praying the uh, rakatain after isha and witr. So all of this will help to complete your regular regular obligatory prayers. And it also shows us that the one who is superior with regards to his or her iman, that they are those people who are haris, or they are striving and working hard to do those nawafil prayers, those, uh, those, uh, the, extra, the extra prayers in order to complete the shortcomings in their farida. And this is a sign that they are striving to be loved by Allah and that Allah in fact has given them a favor in order to be muafiq in trying to 
achieve and attain those uh, higher aspects of Ibadah, higher levels of Ibadah, and to strive to come closer to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has love for that person, and that that person is striving to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, one of the benefits, one of the last benefits we gain from this hadith is it shows that it is from the mercy of Allah, the Almighty, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated these extra sunans for us to pray in order to make up for our shortcomings in our wajib. So that's a great ni'mah from the ni'amillah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.